Okay, Eric, you drew with Irene Sukandar today in the final round of the Battle of the Sexes. Tell us something about the game. Yeah, um, it was a solid game from both of us. We uh, entered a four-night scotch. Uh, given the team situation, um, especially with men being white today, I was looking to play something solid, and uh, I don't think there were too many chances for either of us through, throughout the game. Mm -hmm. So it was a, that was the team approach today, was it? I noticed Joe Gallagher also played Joko Pianissimo against Antoinette Stefanova. Did you guys talk about your team strategy for today together? Or was um, it there wasn't too much specific planning, but in general, in a team situation like this, when you have the white pieces, you want to play something solid. And there's a concept of playing for two results where you, you aim for maybe a slight edge. So you either play for a win or play for a draw, but you right. don't go all out trying to, yeah. to win and take too many risks. So it's a kind of intuitive strategy for last round of team tournaments. Though. Exactly. Okay. What do you think of the format? What do you think of the actual match itself? The format of Battle of the Sexes? Any thoughts on that? Oh, it's been great. I've, uh, yeah, I've been very impressed with like, the novelty of the format mm -hmm. and uh, hoping to see more tournaments like this in the future. Yes, and we're, we're thinking about, we're already planning another one. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, we're interested in people's ideas, what they think about this and how we can tweak it to make it even better. Any ideas? Yeah, it would be worth getting feedback from the players and the spectators. Um, I know these days, a lot of the online spectators enjoy watching faster time formats. Obviously, this is classical chess and games average from like three to five hours. But seeing a format where we incorporate some sort of blitz or rapid, I think would make things even more mm -hmm. exciting. With some sort of point system, I guess, you could put, you could have the classical chess with more points per game, perhaps less for rapid, less still for blitz. Is that the idea? I think it's very possible, yeah. Something um, along those lines. I, I, I would be very open to uh, like brainstorming different mm -hmm. types of formats, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, some sort of point system where we have a classical rap and blitz portion, I think would be very interesting. Okay, let's have a look at you again. Okay. Okay, Eric, you have a four knights defense here. Um, you've got the white side, fairly standard position, black to move. What happened next? Yeah, uh, this is an opening I haven't played in ages. I uh, used to play this a lot in childhood from both sides, but decided it would be a solid choice for today. And in this position, Irene castled. Mm -hmm. And I castled, and then d5, and we entered the main line after it takes, takes bishop g5, c6. I think this has been played tens of thousands of times mm -hmm. uh, in sure. the past. And then after queen f3, uh, Black has a few options here. Remember when I was a kid, I used to play this move bishop e7 is what my coach taught me uh, just to break the pin. Mm -hmm. But these days, I think the current trend is to allow white to take on f6. Um, I think the two main moves here are bishop to d6 and h6. Irene played h6, going for a um, kind of a queenless middle game, almost already approaching the end game, where Black has a bishop pair but yes. slightly compromised pawn structure on the king side. And from here, I played the move knight to e2, which is a very typical positional maneuver. The knight is completely restricted on c3 by the black pawns. And yes. when I go for knight e2, the idea is to put the knight either on d4 or g3, and then eventually to f5 to get kind of some positional pressure on the king side. Mm -hmm. um, so the game continued from here. Rook b8. And then knight d4. Um, knight d4, it's, um, uh, I guess, a more concrete move because, of course, I'm threatening mm -hmm. uh, pawn on c6. I'm also having ideas in knight f5. And I was calculating here, okay, Irene played rook b6, but there's a line uh, bishop to c5, which perhaps is the most critical line. But after knight takes c6, mm -hmm. rook takes b2, I can, can essentially force some simplification with rook f to b1. And if we trade rooks, I mean, you can just look at the black pawn structure. It's, uh, it's like the black pawns did not go to the dentist for a while. <laughs> Have a lot of uh, missing teeth. Yeah. Um, I think there's a move rook b6 too, instead of rook takes b1. Uh, so rook takes b1 back here. 
Oh, yeah, rook b6 sorry. maybe yeah, is yeah. A, a better try for black. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm just I off. thought that there's still some some eventual simplification. Um, I guess I can't take on a7 because rook takes b1, but I'm sure. okay just trading rooks, get my other rook to b1, and like mm -hmm. all of black's pawns are isolated. And I think my idea would be rook b1, knight b4, and um, I, I think only white can play for a win in this position. Yeah. Yeah. Right, okay. So, so we didn't go into again. this, rook b6. Straight away, yeah. Uh, drawback of rook b6 for black is after knight f5, um, essentially getting, um, or forcing the trade of bishop for knight. So black is mm -hmm. conceding the bishop pair, and then we enter this opposite color bishop ending, which uh, it's not the most exciting. Um, definitely had more exciting games <laughs> this tournament, yeah. but especially after yesterday's Crazy, crazy game against Ansaya. I think I needed a game like this yeah, to okay. stop the bleeding. Yeah. Very sensible, yeah. So it just carries on. So yeah, we can zoom forward. Um, C4 maybe on my part wasn't the best move. It allowed the pass pawn, but I think the position is still very much heading towards a draw. C1, yep. And eventually I got the rook to the E file. Uh, we they trade. Come off. You trade a five. Yeah, B1. and ultra solid. Yeah, so uh, if a four here, which looks like an attempt to create mm -hmm. some pressure, I was even thinking of b four. B four, wow. which just gives a pawn, but it enters a completely uh, dead end game Stare after. Yeah. yeah, after it takes takes takes. Course, White yeah. just has a fortress. Yeah. Bishop d three. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, a4 wasn't played, king f8 was played, or um, c5. c5 first, a4. a4 and then king f8, and uh, yeah, I don't think there's much more to talk about here. Okay, thanks very much, Eric. Thank you.